All right, so I have a couple notes to go over real quick. And while they are not important to today's point, they are very necessary in my journey into possibly being a drone operator. So you can follow along right here. Like I said, real quick, went to the universal intersection to practice my hyperlapses and architectural framing as I have no experience in that realm as far as aerial photography and videography goes. I have you know that knowledge from the floor, so I know what I'm doing. Not so much in the sky. As always, I started off with the small battery, the 249 gram battery, and just flew around. Did this in order to warm up, get used to the location, fix all my settings, and see if there's any obstacles or lack of clear in the line of sight, and all of that kind of good stuff. Next, I got a decent hyperlapse over the 101. It's at a 1 25th of a second, 4,000 Kelvin, and ISO 100. Honestly, the only thing that I would have changed back then, and I will in a future video, is that I would have dropped down the shutter to a slower speed, somewhere around like a 10th or even a 5th, because I was at traffic hour, and you can tell that I'm not really getting full motion blur, but if I did it at a 10th or a 5th, I would have been able to do that. The problem and why I didn't do it in this is because I would have been clipping the highlights and I did not yet have my ND filters. Those came literally like two days after I went to go do this. Now, the point of the story. All right. So, well, actually, you guys don't need to see all of that. Here, let's just, there we go. So, what's up, guys? I am Ian, and now we're going to get to the point of today's video, which I have, again, more notes. So, let's just go right into it. The bad part for this location that I found out in, obviously, like, the edit, not there, the panoramas. I had high hopes, but I was left wanting a lot. The Mini 3 Pro specifically, because obviously I have no experience with any other drones, so I don't know if the firmware causes the cameras to do different things in different drones. I can't assume that it would, so I'm assuming it's all, but again, specifically the Mini 3 Pro in the wide angle panorama feature, what, what it does is three in the middle, three in the right, three in the left, and in each of the corners, the subject's bow out hard. Like it's not even slight, it's insane. This makes it kind of terrible and, and to be honest, near impossible to get straight edges on buildings that aren't in the center frame. It's kind of worse the closer you are. I mean, that could be said even architectural photography, just in general, like one frame, if you're down you know, on the floor with a wide angle lens, that's what happens. There's a lot of distortion at the end of the frame. And it's not that there's something wrong with the lens. That is something that's synonymous with wide angle. The lens on the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone is very wide angle. So I kind of get it. But it's not like this is one shot. So I did the best that I could to fix all of this stuff in Lightroom. I did two different takes of the same batches just to see if there was any discrepancies in terms of the settings in post to see if it did different things different ways. So after selecting them all, I used not only spherical but also cylindrical merging in the panorama option. Now these were not HDR panoramas, these are just straight nine shots. There were a couple differences, nothing major. As the next step was I used the guided transform tool, one of the drop downs in Lightroom to get more so straight edges because obviously you're controlling which edges you want to be straight. The problem with doing this is that in order for the edges to become straight is that it cut out so much of the photo that after you crop to make it, you know, an actual aspect ratio of a panorama shot. You can't even tell that it was a panorama shot because there's so little of the completed photo remaining that it doesn't even have the same effect as what you saw, as what you wanted to capture. And because of that, I was, um, clearly very disappointed. So these problems led me to a possible of two solutions. There we go. The first solution that I was thinking is to get further away. The closer you are to something with exceedingly straight edges, like perfectly straight, especially if you're using a wide lens, again, like the DJI Mini 3 Pro has, there's gonna be a lot of warping. If you're not center of the frame, if your subject is not dead in the middle right here, there's gonna be warping. And so the best thing to do if you want no warping using a wide angle lens, is to back up, back way up. And possible solution number two is to not use the native panorama shooting in the app, in the RC controller, because how it is, and you can see it in these shots, it's what's known in the cinematography realm, a Dutch angle. I don't actually know why it, it did that. It's a little weird to me. Even using it like for clouds and everything doesn't fully make sense to me. 
unless you're like, you know, in solution one. Way far away, it just doesn't make sense. So anyone shooting remotely close, Dutch angles are, are going to make it even worse. What I'm gonna do is line it up and not go to panorama settings. I'm just gonna do base, shot, get all of my settings, shoot, 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 tilt down, shoot, and do it again and again, however many rows that I want, and make sure that there's enough overlap by like at least 30% in every shot, and I'll see what it looks like from from that point. And maybe I'll even do the same intersection just to have a good, you know, baseline of see which one ends up being better. Now, Today is not just a shit stain, I promise you that. I was finally able to successfully go from start to finish and do the whole shoot of a waypoint hyperlapse. If you recall, I was not able to do this last time I tried because I crashed into a balcony. And you can see how, click that one, but do it after this. While the settings weren't, you know, perfect, I just wanted to get it done. I wanted to see successfully what it looked like and how I could control it and all that kind of stuff. The finished product was okay. The one gripe that I have, and you can see it right here, when I was putting everything together, you know, like actually setting all the points up and all that kind of stuff, you can see where the subjects were in the center of my frame. Now, if we freeze the frame, the points are not exact. And I'm not sure what's happening here. I, I don't know if that is specific to the waypoint being an issue, or if maybe somehow my satellite like my GPS coordinate and and the you know the talking between drone to RC controller I don't know if something there is getting messed up. There's definitely something that I'm gonna keep an eye on and maybe even write into DJI. I'm a tiny person, I don't know if they'll respond to me, but maybe I'll just go straight into support and see if they have some answer to this because I do feel like it's the GPS stuff having, you know, the, the speaking problems going back and forth between the coordinates and it transmitting to the drone where to be. I don't actually think it's DJI's fault. Like I said, I'm gonna find out or at least try to, but, I think you've heard enough problems out of me today. So next video, I'm gonna try and have at least one possible solution to any of these so that it can help you guys out. And as always, do not subscribe to me if this is your first video of mine that you are watching. Only hit that subscribe button if you have come back for more. And as always, I will see you on the next video.